Hi, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about creating app specifications. Okay, so today I want to talk about documentation and writing like a project specification, right? Because if there's one thing us developers really, really love, it's documentation, right? Actually, that's not true. We, we actually do like documentation. Do, you know, developers like to document, you know, as much as, or at least really good developers like to document, you know, a lot. And not so much in terms of like Word documents and things like that, but to document their code to make sure that everything is clear and concise for the next person. A bad developer just charges away and, and nobody could read what they do afterwards. This is one of the reasons why good code is, is important. Right, but well, I want to talk more about you know creating actual like documents for a project. So, and this is something I'm, I've always been very hot and cold about. Right, so if you've ever worked at like a large corporation or like you know when I was working in investment banks, you would always have, you know, we'd have several projects. You know, and they were never really that big, but there was always like a full time project manager on them who they would just they would get they they would go and start typing away, and they would put together these huge documents, or like or like a whole series of documents. So we would have like projects that would have like. 10 documents that I don't think anybody ever read, but they look really good sitting on a, on a shared drive someplace. Or, you know, they'll come to you before the project and say, oh, Eric, you know, I've, you know or they'll, they'll hand over this big 200 page specification and I have had 200 page specifications and even bigger where they'll print it all out and, you know, and hand it to you and go, oh, you know, here you go. Now I've been working on that uh, till four o'clock in the morning. You know, I didn't think I was gonna get it done in time. And you're like, wow, time, time well spent, thank, thank you very much. And you sort of you take it away and you think, I'm, not, I'm probably not gonna read it, but you don't wanna tell them that because, you know, because they wanna feel important, right? <laughs> so, and they'll, they'll do stuff like put UML documents in the uh, uh, diagrams or, or maybe some use case diagrams, which, the, you know, depends on, on the developer, but, you know, a lot of the times the developer once they understand that they don't really need that level of documentation and uh you know, or they you know or they won't even bother to read it because it's it's just it's just too much so it, when i say that i'm hot and cold with documentation i don't like documentation that is written for documentation's sake and that happens a lot i mean and even when we work with clients sometimes we will put, put documents together that are not you know i think that documents should be useful right you should think about the audience you know that are that are going for it and to contrast that, like I've worked on projects where we've had no documentation at all, and that's really, really hard. It's really hard to guess what other people want. Like, so, as, like as an app developer working for clients, you'll get things. People say stuff like, you know, hey Eric, um, I, I'm looking for an app that's a cross between Uber, Flappy Birds, and Tinder. How much would something like that cost, right? And you just like. I just need a little bit more information, which in your head is not the same as what's in my head, right? And that's one of the things, writing a, a specification at the beginning of a project is so important. It's something that we do every time we do a new application. So we don't just say, can you do like a such and such? No, we have to put something together that makes it so that what's in my head is in the developer's head or the designer's head. So we can kind of, we could share that same vision. The same with clients, you know, clients very rarely come to us with documentation. Sometimes they do, which is nice. They'll come with wireframes and stuff like that. But a lot of times they'll come to us just with, you know, we'll have a chat, we'll sit down. And a lot of times I'll just sketch out, you know, diagrams and stuff in my notebook. I'll come home and I'll put it into, into a document. So let me just show you uh, kind of what I mean here, right? I'm not talking about like 200 page specifications with a version history and everything like that. Although that kind of depends on the client. Usually I'm talking like three to five pages, just like a few wireframes. So here's one of the first uh, specifications I did for, for one of our own apps. This is one for EarSpy. So what I did was I hired an Indian company uh, and I started out doing it myself, but I, thought, I realized I wasn't going to get anywhere. So I hired someone to do it and I thought I better put something together so they know what I'm talking about, right? Because you could, a lot of times when you're dealing with the software development company, you're talking to one person and that's not the person doing the code and they're trying to convey that to somebody else and you have this telephone thing going. So you need to, you need to put together just a, a, just a small documentation, you know, not, nothing complicated. You don't, the goal is to convey information, right? So here's the one for EarSpy. It was really simple because it was such a simple app idea. You know, a really simple <laughs> flow chart here with two things. I just want the, the audio that's coming into the microphone to go out to the audio. That's all I want to happen. Right? And then I put together some wireframes really quickly um, with Basalmic. And uh, Basalmic is one of my favorite tools for wireframing. I know there are other better ones out there like 
proto.io and there's so many out there but i just i really like the simplicity of the psalm like even though it's it's really old uh but you know i know all the shortcuts and everything and i know there's better ones out there but one day one day i'll start using those so you know a little thing here is just you know what it should look like the layout you know and then a bit of markup say what everything does you know what kind of in-app purchases we're going to have and what the menu option should be and, and stuff like that and just really really simple now when we do games it's a lot more complicated so uh, the first games that we did were the, uh, the the language learning games, so the bubble bath games, which we still do. We we've used this, you know, we have a whole series. We have about 23 different languages that we've done this for, but this was the first specification. So this was something where I sat down and I thought, you know, how are we going to do something like this? What, how should something like this work? And you know, it was my first game, so you know, our games are very simple. This is something that you know you, some of you guys might point out. You know, our games are not very complicated. They're very simple. Uh, so, you know, basically an overview, kind of what the game should do, the purposes of the, of, the, of the game, you know, how it should work. And I think how it should work is probably one of the most important things. You want the, the flow of the application to be brought in as, as early as possible. So first we see the splash screen and then we see the title screen. And this is just me with graph paper and a ruler and trying to draw like you like my duck here, right? This is, this is why I hire designers, right? So, uh, you know, you know, click on start, click on high scores, click on instructions, and then kind of, you know, what each one here says. And then I go to the category screen and I go to levels and then what each level should look like. And here, you know, back in the early versions, it was actually in a bathtub uh, rather than having a scenic background. Uh, and the bubbles would float up. I tap on those and I tap on this and uh, I got the health, the level pages, and just a very simple description of what everything does. And, um, it was much more complicated than Ear Spy, even though it is a very simple, simple game. Uh, and then, you know, the early levels, what it should look like, and then kind of a summary of what each level should do and how they should change from the previous level. And we only had 10, so it was, it was very simple to spe specify. And then some ideas of other apps that kind of have that look that I like. And this is one of the things that, you know, I think is really difficult in terms of doing design, especially when you're doing it for clients, is it's really hard to know what they have in their head or what kind of what kind of things they like aesthetically. So a lot of times we will say, you know, do you have an? Is there another app that you see that you think you like that style of design? We're not going to copy that design. We're not going to use their images, but we're going to we're going to use that as a basis for how this thing should look going forward. And this is what I, what I provided them in the beginning. Uh, and then you know, and then because I'm a technical person, I also put you know how I want the data to be stored in XML and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, which steps we should do. And I also put in stuff like, in the future, it would be nice to have this just so that when we're coding it, we can know that, you know, we'll allow for that. So, you know, it, however we structure the data, we say in the future, we might add special bubbles or something like that. Here's another one for iSpy. Because of the success of EarSpy, we did another one with video, but it was, it was kind of okay. And you can see it in a browser, you know, really, really simple specification. And then we started just, you know, because we're working with our own internal team, we use Google Documents now. So we don't, I don't use Word documents so much anymore, just be, only when doing client stuff. So I prefer using Google Docs because it's really easy to collaborate with the developers. And I know Office 365 does a lot of that stuff now, but I, I find it really clunky. At least I did last time I used it, which was just a couple of years ago. But here I could just put together a quick documentation saying, you know, what the app is, that we, my app idea, you know, if it's a form-based one, I use Basalmic, you know, put together a few few specs, you know, kind of how it should work, you know, what the design should look like. Uh, here's one for Viaduct. So this one is, has a lot of, uh, Viaduct's a project that we're working on at the moment. And this one, you know, a lot of flow charts, how things should work, maybe some mind maps, some stuff. Just get everything into one document. Uh, and, uh, and there's, you know, Chinese Spy, same kind of thing where I was like a, a language learning game but I want it to be spy based and kind of some of the things that, that I would think is some other language categories, you know, how, it, you know, the kind of text that would have. And then some, again, it's just sort of stepping through my initial ideas of how it should look. One of the beautiful things about this is that I could do something like this and that gives the designers, you know, we have Sandy who's been on the team for, I guess, two and a half years. She could look at something like this and come up with like a bunch of different options. And they always, they all look way better than mine. Right. But you know, but I just kind of say where things should, should go and kind of how it should look. And a lot of times a finished product doesn't look anything like that. 
And again, a lot of times, you know, because we're using a Google Doc, it you know, we don't have to worry about version history so much like we would if you know it was on a G drive somewhere in some organization. But we can just go here and and make any comments, and uh, you know, you, it's easy to notify somebody of a comment by just putting their Google Plus name on there and they will get an email saying you were mentioned in this comment and then they could just go through it and do all that kind of stuff. So anyway, so that's you know, basically how we do things where we specify new projects. Now, oh, and also, uh, you know, I'll, I'll add Google, you know, sometimes I'll go find images from Google Images, which you can't use in your app for the most part if they're copyright, but you know, if it's an internal document, so it doesn't really make that big a deal. And that kind of helps. The whole goal of the document is just to, to get everybody on the same page. So any ideas that I have goes into this document. They might have better ideas and then we can modify the document. In the end, we have something that we're all working off the same thing. So anyway, I'd be interested to hear what you guys do in terms of specifications. I know if you're a one-man show, a lot of times you don't need them. But even when I'm doing my own stuff, even when I'm coding something myself, sometimes I'll just sketch it out like in a notebook before I actually do it just so I can get an idea of what it should look like rather than coding it and then moving everything afterwards. So I'd be really interested to hear how you guys do this kind of stuff. And uh, that's it for today. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.